Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. Can we do this like this? I don't know. I normally have a light on to the left of me, but in this position it was just like making a big glare. So I think I'm gonna just try this like this. You know, I'm right-handed, so I hold my ruler in my left hand, and I always have the, you know, the big shower bar on it. And I just feel bad because when I cut or do things, you can't really see what I'm doing most of the time, I don't think. So I'm just going to try this. We'll see how it goes. Okay, we are going to do a very simple quilt block. And I'm showing you this part of me cutting because I just want to show you how... You can cut a bunch of squares from scraps and not have to be like cutting each individual piece of fabric. So I want some five inch squares. I'm going to cut six of them. And here's what I do. I just take my fabric and uh, pressing it is optional. You certainly can press it if you want to. And as long as I have five inches this way and five inches this way, we're good. So I'm just going to put that down and then I'm going to take another one and I'm just going to match up the corners down here like this so they can be different sizes because when we trim everything's going to be trimmed. Put another one just matching up this bottom corner actually I really do need to go press these. What do we have here? One, two, three, four. Let's use another mottled color. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, that's making it. One more. Six. I am not going to bother to press, but in a perfect world, you know, you certainly could have pressed these individually or maybe stack three or four and press them together. Now I'm going to just, uh, let's move this over. I want it on a line, a good quarter of an inch over a line because I want to make sure I get the edge of every one of those layers. And I'm just going to trim. I'm on the five, so I'm going over to the 10. I'm doing five inch squares and I'm going to trim. Now all of this can go back into your box of fabric scraps, assuming you have a box. And now I'm going to turn it this way. And again, I want to make sure that uh, I get all the edges on this side. And five over. And there you go. You've got six squares, all five inches. Easy as that. I'm just going to go press real quick. Of course, my iron isn't hot because it turns off automatically, so I'm waiting. But I wanted to show you. Now, you look at your scraps, this crumb box, this trash. This is big enough that I can cut some squares, so that's going back into my scrap box. And I can't even get a two inch square out of that, so that goes in the crumb pile. This goes into the scrap box to be used again, and this goes in the crumb pile. It's nighttime. I'm <laughs> doing a nighttime video. It's so cozy, but it's so dark. I am going to take three of these, and let's see. I don't think I have any kind of a plan at all, but let's just take these three. So I've got like a, a golden, a pink, and this. And all right sides up. And the first thing we're going to do, because we're going to be making four inch square blocks, we're going to be making two vertical cuts. It's going to be like a strip set. And I think it's easy. I think it's cool. But we need to start with a rectangle so that when we do our two seams and sew them together, we end up with a square. But we don't have a rectangle here, we have a square. So we're going to take an inch off 
one of the edges of this 5 inch square so we will end up with 4 by 5. So here's my inch line and don't toss these we're going to be using them. Now put the rectangle this way as you're cutting you want the long end this way and you're going to make two cuts and I'm not going to do wonky. I thought I'm going to try something not wonky this time. I'm sure you could do it wonky, but I didn't want to. It doesn't matter where. Just pick a spot and just cut a line. And take one, put it under. I'm going to go reattach these. These two, and then the next two, then the next two. Be right back. It's so dark all around me. It's kind of creepy. Okay, I have these done, and I just finger pressed. And I'm just going to stack them again. And I have, you know, the shorter piece all on the same side. And we're going to make another cut. Try to just stack those as best as you can. And again, we're just going to make a straight cut, but it doesn't matter where. I mean, you don't want to be too close to the edge because you're going to be sewing, so you need some sticking out. So I'm just going to go like right here. Just picking a line and going with it. Now that one is crooked a little bit. So I screwed up, and here's what I did wrong. I put my ruler on this bumpy edge. I shouldn't have done that. I should have had this turned like this so that my ruler could lay flat and then I wouldn't have wiggled. But I wiggled. So I have, you know, a curve up there. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to keep going because I will just uh, adjust my seam allowance to make it all work. Now, You need to take the bottom one and move it to the top. And then all three will be different. I'm going to go attach again. I don't know, whoever invented irons that turn off after like half a minute. I don't know. I don't know why anybody would do that. So look, we have three pieces of strip sets. Now, yes, there's many ways to make strip sets. and. <laughs> just the reason I started with five inch squares and took an inch off is because I wanted to show what you can do with leftover five inch squares. Or I know a lot of you buy a lot of five inch squares from me and I wanted to give you a way to do it. Now you can do it with any size square and if you want to turn that square into a rectangle and you're going to make two cuts then you still have to take an inch off one side. But we're not wasting those inches. So this is what I have is, you know, three strip sets and they're all three different, but yet they have the same colors. You would make a whole bunch of these and you would have a whole bunch of these little strips left. So I'm going to go ahead and whip up these right now and I'm going to do the same thing. I am going to stack these. Let's see. I'm going to do it this way so when I cut that inch I will have a uh, little horizontal bars on that one. You could absolutely start with a 4 by 5 inch rectangle and not do this step and then just not have those for the next step. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cut. Now those others that came out like really even. Where are you? So I'm going to try to be a little bit more lopsided this time. So maybe like this over here. Not have the three bars all be so alike. Putting one under. I'm going to go attach. You could do another cut right now, but I don't like all those pieces. So I like to do it this way. And uh, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, and definitely chain piece. I'm going to sew two, send two through, and then the other two through, and then the other two through. Be right back. Once again, I am just finger pressing, and I'm going to stack these again. 
and this time I'm putting my ruler on the, on the flat side we'll let those guys just stick out over there and I'm gonna come kind of you know closer to this guy let's have a big piece on the end so like oh let's see way over here see I didn't wiggle that time depending on how you stacked them it might not work just to flip or whatever so just when you go to your machine just make sure that you attach the missing one like we need the blue on this one and we need the flowers on this one not the pink because it's already there so just put them back together so that there's no three the same and another thing I realized because I'm just making this up as we go <laughs> I certainly didn't watch a video about this but when we sewed them back together it didn't matter which end that we attach that piece it could be on this side or it could have been on this side and with a small block it's hard to get different sizes because we don't have much space. Next time, if I ever do this again, I'll do it with something bigger, like maybe an 8 inch or whatever. Then we can really vary the sizes of the strips. But here's what we end up having. We end up having some squares now that should be about 4 inches square. And uh, if yours is a little bit off, you can always trim it to square it up. I'm not going to bother to do that. And if you want to make a quilt out of this, you would have a whole bunch that look different. So let's move this guy out. You know, I did a little bit of editing, and I like the angle okay, but I could not ever record like this again because it's so dark around me that I feel like I'm, you know, just in blackness. So it's, it's hard for me to uh, see what I'm doing. I'll use any excuse I can as to why I'm doing a lousy job. Now, if you would have started with four by five rectangles and you didn't have these guys, that would have been great. You would still end up with squares and, uh, you know, you can put these together any way you want. You can do this kind of thing where you have vertical, horizontal, vertical, horizontal, vertical, horizontal, and that's cool it's just nice and scrappy and you would have different you know size pieces or this is what I was thinking take one of these and you would have a big variety this one isn't matching really anything and you could do this if you just wanted to continue and make long strip sets and then do rows like that and then put the rows together or you can turn these guys this way and put one in between and what I like is they're a little bit too long now which is perfect because you can just stick it in there and then trim oh this one does match this guy seems to me there should be a way oh no you know what there wouldn't be a way because we don't have enough to play with but because there's six different colors here and we only have six of these to choose from but if you had a whole bunch ready and you know made a whole bunch of these blocks then you would have uh, you know some other colors that you could put that wouldn't touch any of these but it's okay if it does but what you could do is do a row like this you'd have your sashing in between everything's so nice and scrappy and you would just keep going and then for the next row to have no intersections you could take one of your blocks and cut it and put that at the beginning of the next row so let's just pretend this one is cut your rows won't be even you'll have to trim every other row to make it match up but you would have this here then you'd have your sashing like this and then you put another full block this way see you'd have no intersections it looks really scrappy that way and super cool well, I would turn this one like I said you'd have more variety
Let's see how it would work out. Of course, they would be a little bit more centered because when we sew them together, you'd have all your seam allowances and stuff. But it would work out like that. I feel like I'm all over the place tonight. I'm not used to the darkness. <laughs> all right, you guys. I hope you learned something. Maybe even just how to stack your fabric to cut your squares. You probably already knew that because I think everybody knows that. But the first time I saw it, I didn't know it. I was like, oh, what a cool idea. All right, so, um, oh, and then obviously at the end of this row, you would have some of these that were cut in half. So you would just take another half and put it here. And because there would be an extra seam allowance in these rows, those would be a little shorter. So these guys would have to be trimmed a little tiny bit. I think it's cool. Try it. Maybe you'll like it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back with more soon. Bye! When it's daytime.